Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was born on May 8, 1886, from the mind of John Stith Pemberton, a pharmacist who lived in Atlanta, Georgia. When first made, Pemberton's mixture was considered a medical marvel meant to ease the health worries of the time. Its syrupy quality was made up of various ingredients, including extract from the coca leaf and the cola nut, thus the name Coca-Cola. The arrival of Coca-Cola was marked by a number of marketing ideas that were ahead of their time. Frank M. Robinson, Pemberton's trusty bookkeeper and marketing genius, came up with the name Coca-Cola and the script logo that it's still used today. The syrup, when mingled with sparkling carbonated water, made its first appearance at Jacob's Pharmacy in Atlanta, where it quickly caught on. In its early days, Coca-Cola was praised as a magical brain tonic. It was said to help with everything from headaches to indigestion to weariness of the bones. Pemberton, a veteran of the Civil War, had himself been addicted to morphine for pain as a result of a saber wound to the chest that he sustained at the Battle of Columbus. He started experimenting with painkillers that would be a morphine-free alternative. His first recipe was called Dr. Tuggle's Compound Syrup of Globe Flour. Its active ingredient came from a poisonous plant called the button bush. Then he started experimenting with coca and coca wines. Next, he made a recipe with the cola nut and Damiana extracts and called it Pemberton's French Wine Coca. After that, he decided to combine alcohol and cocaine, but when Atlanta enacted temperance legislation in 1886, he started to produce a non-alcoholic version. Using trial and error, and with the help of Atlanta drugstore owner Willis E. Venable, he finally came up with a set of directions for his recipe. But the magic wasn't complete until he accidentally blended the base syrup with carbonated water when making a glass of the beverage. This happy accident is a reminder that sometimes the best things come from unexpected circumstances. Pemberton was sure that his bubbly creation would help people feel better as a safe option that wouldn't make them dependent on pain medications like heroin. In fact, he enthusiastically promoted Coca-Cola as a cure for everything, including morphine addiction, headaches, exhaustion relief, calming of the nerves, and even impotence. After Coca-Cola hit the market, Pemberton became ill. Stricken by illness and teetering on the edge of bankruptcy, he was in a desperate situation. He was still addicted to morphine, and the burden of an expensive addiction weighed heavily on his shoulders. In spite of these setbacks, Pemberton held on to a glimmer of hope. He believed that his formula had the potential to become a national drink. With this vision in mind, he tried to retain a share of the ownership to pass down to his son, ensuring a lasting legacy. However, Pemberton's son had different aspirations. The allure of money proved too strong, and in 1888, both father and son made the difficult decision to sell the remaining portion of the patent to Asa Griggs Candler, a fellow pharmacist who was also a business tycoon and politician. The transaction was rumored to be around 2300 US dollars and was a pivotal moment that shaped the future of Coca-Cola. In 1892, Candler founded the Coca-Cola company and trademarked the brand. And so, the tale of Coca-Cola comes to a bittersweet conclusion. Dr. John Stith Pemberton, the brilliant mind behind Coca-Cola, faced his own battles as illness consumed him and bankruptcy loomed near. In a twist of bitter irony, the very elixir that Pemberton had hoped would bring relief and a brighter future became the catalyst for his own downfall. And so, Coca-Cola's legacy lives on, while Pemberton's vision and contributions became a mere footnote in the annals of Coca-Cola history. As we raise our glasses filled with the effervescent elixir that is Coca-Cola, let us not forget the remarkable journey of its creator, Dr. John Stith Pemberton, a man whose dreams merged with the carbonated waters of fate, forever imprinted on the pages of pop culture history. Now, what do you guys think? Leave your thoughts about this pop culture phenomenon in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. But most of all, thanks for watching. This is Rich from Rerun Zone. I'll see you next time.